Gates Debbie Adams here on behalf of Apex Trader Funding, and I am here today with Sahil. Sahil, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you, Gates? Oh, I'm doing fantastic, man. I appreciate your time today. And everybody knows why we brought you in for the interview, because you are doing what every trader wants to be doing, and that is cashing out of your funded account. So uh, first of all, congratulations on that. And, and is this is this actually your first payout with Apex? No, this is my like third or fourth. Third or fourth. Okay, so you've been at it for a bit. So let's let's learn a little bit about you, kind of just to, to put everything in context, because, of course, every trader is different. Every trader has a different background, but there's a bunch of traders out there that might, it, you know, your story may resonate with them versus somebody else's. So I kind of like to set that stage. Um, for, first of all, about how long have you been trading? Um, so quite a while, like almost 12 years now. <laughs> but uh, but. With futures, it's been relatively recent. I only started futures, I think, uh, October, uh, September, October of, of uh, 2022. So mostly have been trading uh, equities and options for the last 12 years. Gotcha. So what, what got you into trading in the first place? What was kind of the big trigger for you? Um, honestly, like I started off pretty young. And so it was just interesting to me that like I could take some of my birthday money that I had gotten together and be like, Hey dad, can you put this in an account for me? Because I wasn't old enough to do it yet anyway. Oh, wow. So I was like, you put it in an account for me. And I'd be like, Hey, can you buy like one share of like Coca-Cola, which doesn't even move much per year. <laughs> and I'll be like, and I swear to God, it was the funniest thing. Like I would go to the grocery store and I'd be like, uh, any like if any kind of stock that we had so like I don't even drink soda much but I'd be like with Coca-Cola I'd be like dad we gotta buy a six pack of Coke because it's gonna help the share price <laughs> so, like, this is like like I started so I started really young and that was like when I was like 12 so that was even like 16 like years ago but um it was like that was kind of like the roots of it and then I really got into it um as I got a little bit older and it was just something where I was like I I could see the opportunity that this presents and how this can be hopefully like life changing and hopefully allow you to, you know, create an income that can, that can, that comes in a way that like really engages you on a day to day basis. Like it's a very interesting and very difficult and very challenging uh, uh, like job, but also it's just like, it gives you the opportunity to hopefully fulfill some goals that I have to like, hopefully help family, help, help others around you. And I think that this, this is a job that unlike any other gives you the opportunity. That's that's awesome. Now I'm I'm hearing you talk, the way you're talking. I'm gonna ask you something I've never asked anybody else before because I ask a lot of the same yeah. questions. But it's seems pretty obvious to me that trading is for you a lot about a lot more than than just making money. There seems to be this much deeper passion behind it for you. Is that is would you say that's accurate? Yes, sir. Yep. I'm hoping that uh I'm hoping that uh, wherever kind of, however the journey takes you, because you have, you have good years, you have bad years and you have to work through that. And that's just naturally how it goes with market cycles and also with adapting, right? Cause sometimes you'll be like, oh, I have a great strategy that works. We're in a trending market, but then sometimes things can turn 180, but, um, yeah, definitely the goal is like to be able to build this into something where, uh, where like hopefully on a weekly basis, it can be used to hopefully help change someone's life for the better. That's cool. There is way more passion there than uh, than you hear a lot because everybody's about the numbers, everybody's about the statistics, and I, I love hearing it, man. That was uh, that was that was pretty fantastic. So so let's let's learn a little bit more about the uh, about the journey for you. So so you started trading uh, equities and options starting about twelve years ago before you were legally able. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I have a that's sixteen year old. Son, my dad like buying like one one share at a time for me. <laughs> my, my my 16 year old son has has come to me and wants me to uh to to work with him on on getting started trading. I'm like, well, we, I guess we've got a little time for you to paper trade anyway for a yeah. bit. So, uh, now okay, so so you started off in equities and options, and then uh, you said uh, last year, kind of latter part of last year, you started moving into futures. What brought you into futures? Um, a friend actually told me about about you know that he was he was going through this journey with um with trading futures with a prop firm and uh it it was just an interesting concept to me because it was like you know naturally like if you trade options for a while like I've pretty much been trading options since I was like twenty two um like <laughs> there's a lot of stress involved there for sure and one thing that you realize when there's like kind of more like black swan type market events like COVID is like, you can have a really bad year. <laughs> and 
Um, and, uh, and, and the thing about options is obviously like if you're playing shorter term options, like the market did recover very nicely. It recovered massively, but with shorter term options, you don't have the time frame for that necessarily. So it can be, it can be tough. I always got um, an expiration date for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and so, and so, yeah, so it was just like, so that was, that was something that was pretty eye opening, and it led me to seeking out something where I could, um, you know, have a little bit, uh, have a little bit more of like a safety net within um, how much risk is being put on the table. And obviously, you manage that on a day to day basis within your portfolio and within your options trading, anyways. But um, having like a structure within, like, hey, you're actually working with another company, and they're providing you their capital to trade with. Um, and that you can earn your way to that, which is the biggest part, right? Like show that you're good enough to be able to do it and then hopefully have the opportunity that that just spoke volumes to me for something I was looking for anyways. And then when my buddy told me about it, shout out to Joey, um, <laughs> he he pretty much had me convinced within a, pretty much an hour or so. Wow. Had to give it a shot. Okay, so I got to ask the question. So when he first started talking to you about this, this whole, I, I mean, I don't know if you were familiar with prop firms prior to this, but in terms of you know, he's walking, you know, you know, you can get funded, you know, you don't have to put up the capital, this and that. What did you have like an initial gut reaction to this? Or were you already familiar with with really the fact that they existed? So I knew about prop firms and stuff, because, um, you know, when you're coming out of college and everything, like there's there's an opportunity to pursue that if you want to. And some of them will actually recruit on, on campuses as well. So I I encountered a few, but um, but yeah, like essentially what they were offering compared to like what else I was going to look at working within was not really in line for me. So I knew that those existed, but the online ones, especially for futures trading, I had no idea about that previously. So um, I was a little a little bit later to the party for sure for finding out about it. But man, oh man, I'm grateful it came around and that I found out because it's been a it's been a, a big blessing, like a good opportunity for sure. That's great. So. You've mentioned that you obviously started off with equities, you moved into options, you moved into futures. As you've changed instruments or instrument types, how has that gone in terms of the strategy that you learned that you developed in equities, then what you developed into to options, and then what you developed in, that you trade futures with? How has that how has that evolution gone for you? Was it a fairly simple transition from one to another, or did you did you have to start over from square one? What's most interesting is uh, I'll essentially ex exclude like leap contracts for options and pretty much like anything that's like three months out because that gives you more of a time frame. But when you're looking at the shorter term ones, because I'll do I'll do those as well. But specifically for the shorter term ones, it was really funny exactly how you asked the question because from stocks you were like, okay, I can hold these longer if I need to. Then I went to options and I was like, I can't hold these as long because I'll be in the green and then within three candles I could be deep in the red um, because of theta burn, right? And then you get the futures and you're like, oh my God, I got the move right. I only have, you know, one mini on, but I got one candle where the market dropped half a percent and I just lost my account, you know? And so I was like, the progression was just realize like what kind of mark you're in and realize that like your entries have to be better and better and better. And you have to adapt more quickly on the fly. Uh, your strategy of how long you want to hold, where your stop loss is, where your take profit is, because sometimes you got to move your take profit, even if you're green, when you're seeing that the market action is not providing what you were looking for when you got hurt. So Right. So, yeah. so obviously there's a little more intensity as, as, as the term gets shorter and shorter. Uh, what's the upside for you to be now in futures? Um, honestly, like it, it's wild. Like you'll, even if you trade like zero DTE options, on the triple Qs, um, which are obviously expiring every day of the week now. It used to be three expirations per week. It used to be one expiration per week. Only five was expiring three times a week. Now it was three op expirations. Now it's five. It's every day. Even with those contracts, like let's say you get like a um, 10 point move in the futures, right? That's going to be equivalent on one contract in options to me, like maybe like $15, depending on what your strike price is for your option. And that's awesome. Um, like, hey, I'm I'm all for taking green trades, even if they're smaller, because if you get the move you're looking for, it doesn't matter if you have one contract or you had five contracts on. Right. But within within futures, you get a 10 point move on the futures, you're up 200 bucks. And I look at that as a very good day. Like I, I've i obviously adjusted over time, like in after COVID, <laughs> um, I've adjusted my view of like what kind of targets I set for sure. And uh, and like 
I mean, especially if that's your first trade, and maybe you can place another one and 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 you know grab ten more points um, with good risk in hand. Like that's that's an incredible opportunity. And so futures, yeah, it's 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 the speed of the moves for sure that that provides just just some incredible opportunity for hopefully achieving the goals that we were just talking about. Awesome, awesome. So. <clears throat> At this point, obviously, you've gone the full you've gone the full spectrum. You've you've traded your own money. You've traded, uh, you know, as a funded trader with Apex and 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 perhaps you know even somewhere else. What for you is the biggest difference when you're operating in, in terms of your operation? What what's the difference for you when you've got your own money on the line versus not having your own money on the line? Um, you almost like to be honest. It operates the exact same because I still look at every cost. I'm pretty analytical with it. And I look at every cost of like what I paid to purchase an evaluation, to pass an evaluation, to pay for my funded account and to get my, or I'm sorry, my PA and get it activated. I looked at that as a cost that I put in that I want to recover if possible um, by getting a payout. And so I still look at it as capital on the line, which, um, which is how I, want to want to look at it because at any point when you're like oh it's like if i blow this account no big deal because it's not my money or something like you want to be good enough that if that's your 50k or your 100k or whatever or let's just go with the amount that your trailing stop is that's your 2500 dollars essentially on the line right? right like how are you going to treat it because at the end of the day a lot of us can succeed in sim accounts because that whole factor of something being on the line is taken off, right? And so when you're actively thinking about it, it's like, hey, this is like my money still on the line. This is like an opportunity I've been provided. Also, just the opportunity, like, you know, five, six months ago, I didn't even know this existed. So I didn't have this chance. I don't want to look at it as as like something that I can just blow off and throw away and be willy-nilly about. I want to look at it as a as a big blessing that I'm I'm hopefully going to be able to take advantage of uh God willing. So awesome. I love it. <laughs> now how did you end up with apex versus somebody else um i tried a competitor first <laughs> did you, without necessarily mentioning any names what was the big <laughs> difference for you when you found apex um honestly it was it was being able to have like multiple accounts going on at the same time because at that time the competitor didn't offer that um and for me one of the reasons i really liked that was because like you know, especially when you're setting your stops, like, I mean, we, we train ourselves to be as like non-emotional as possible. Right. And limit emotion, but we're human. And I'll be honest in, in 12 years, having emotions is still really, I say 12, but that was like when I was trading one share at a time with my dad, but like, you know, like even in, in like the last six, seven years, really doing it a lot. Um, like emotions has still been a factor for me. Like it's not something that I can wipe out. And I think we're all just different in that way. Um, I find, I, I think the best traders are able to effectively wipe that out more often and like really stick to, you know, a perfect system. I'll be honest, I'm very flawed. I still think that I can have success and, and grow and continue to achieve, hopefully, um, God willing, but, uh, but I know that that's one of my flaws. And so if I, if I take a trade on an account and I get stopped out and I'm like down like, you know, 300, 400 bucks on that account for the day. It would be, I have, I have a tendency to try to want to make it back. You know what I mean? But I know that that's not always the way. When you have multiple accounts available, you can be like, all right, this is, this is essentially another version of what they say about spreading the risk by like not making sure you set tighter stops and spread it across multiple accounts and then hopefully take profits that also multiply across more accounts. But I look at it as here, I have another fresh opportunity to trade. And I want to keep that same mentality that I got. I want to try to hit my profit target without feeling like, oh, I'm already in a drawdown and I got to make this back first. Because I feel like that sets a bet. It sets a tougher precedent for someone to take take more trades and take trades that aren't necessarily their setup. And so when you have more accounts, you can actually spread that out in that way, your thinking and also your approach um, to how you're trading so that you actually do stick to, hey, if I'm stopped out here, I'm done for the day. Let me move on to my next account, try to hit my profit target. If I'm stopped out on that, it's okay. It's a manageable stop out and, and keep going like that. So it actually helps keep me, um, keep me more in tune, uh, with, with what my, I want my strategy to be. There's financial capital and then there's mental capital. And absolutely. When you look at that little, uh, you know, that little, uh, box on the chart trader and you see red, it definitely has an effect on how you behave. 
I think it's happened to every single one of us. Sometimes it happens when it gets too green. You know, you just never know. And I, I that's 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 all part of it. And I, I like that the way that you use because I do multiple accounts, but I actually use the trader and I just trade it on all the accounts at once. And if I just hit my up or down or whatever, I'm done. But uh, I, I can absolutely see how if it's been a rough start to the day, you know, you get a couple of back to back, just, you know, bite you moving into a brand new account, starting at zero and starting fresh can really help reset the mind. So yes, sir. I like it. I like it. Well, let's say you're talking to somebody that's just going down the road of, uh, of uh, being a funded trader. And uh, they, uh, they ask you for the biggest piece of advice you can give them as they start going into this process. What's the biggest thing you tell them? Stay humble, stay humble always. I mean, you know, just like you said, you'll have those days when things are looking really nicely green. And I'll tell you a funny story, actually. This is <laughs> a very tragic story, but hopefully this helps because at the end of the day, if even one person watches this and they've had a similar experience, then hopefully they continue on. Um, when I was with uh, one of y'all's competitors, and honestly, I appreciated their service as well. Like, I think all of this, being able to trade like futures with a proper, I think it's an incredible opportunity. And I'm so grateful that that, led me to this, being here with Apex, you know what I mean? So I'm grateful for every part of the journey. Um, but it's it's a little bit different, like obviously like the um, the payout structure and like what you need to do to get a payout. Um, and uh, I was kind of like also just brand new to trading futures and I, it was my first time being funded and all that. And, you know, I eventually got an account up to being positive over over $6,000 within three days. Um, and I was like, and I was taking the setups that I like. the market was moving a lot those days. So I was like, you're able to get more outsized moves and feeling really good. And, um, and in that same day, I remember that I hit 6k positive. I was up three and a half K on the day. I lost the account that day. Um, yeah. Um, and at that, at that, at the competitor, you only need five days, um, to take a payout, but it's a little bit different structure and you're limited to a certain amount of payout. And so I was like, I was like, I'm almost there. Like, let me just, let me just be smart, right? Like bide my time. It's a good day. Let's actually maximize it and actually get something out of it. And then the market, you know, <laughs> I, and I remember uh, the trade that took me out was a massive reversal on the index with two contracts in the minis, two minis on the NQ is all it took to wipe me out. Wow. Um, and I just held in, held in, held in, held in. <laughs> And it was like, it was like, what are you doing? You know, like, what are you doing? I didn't set a stop loss or nothing. Right. And so it's like, oh my gosh. But the thing that's interesting is like, if you're just starting out on this, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make so many mistakes. You're going to have those highs. You're going to have the lows, all of that. Just remember in the lows that you're learning something that could provide for you so much in the future. And just remember in the highs that if you don't stay humble and you don't appreciate what you have in that moment, it can be taken from you so fast. Just like, just like the beauty of this life, like you don't know how long you're alive for you. I wake up every morning. It's a big blessing, right? And so like in the same way, having the opportunity to do this and like if you have the like the blessing of getting to hit your take profit for the day and you're feeling good and the market's looking like it's not giving you a reentry, nothing to force. Just stay humble, be grateful, and you'll do well. Excellent. Man, I appreciate this. And it's great hearing from traders now. You've not just achieved one payout, you've already achieved three or four payouts, I think you said with Apex. And 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 so not only are you are you moving in the right direction, but you're doing so consistently. And that's the biggest thing that we love to see is just that that, that consistency, that ongoing uh, you know, month after month, payout after payout. Uh, that's the goal everybody's everybody here is shooting for. So thank you for taking your time and sharing your uh, your experiences with us. And uh, hopefully here in the next few months, maybe we'll get back together and just kind of do a catch up and see where you've gone from here. Does that sound good? Absolutely. That sounds great. I appreciate you, Gates. You got it, Sahel. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll chat soon, okay? Sounds great.